Let's talk a little bit about marketing automation. <laughs> um, so we did, we saw an interesting trend, I suppose, this year in the report. Um, automation adoption has grown quite considerably. Um, if we look at it compared to 2014, uh, the adoption uh, was around 47% in the Australian market. And uh, this report showed adoption was up to approximately 63%. Um, so that's that's some good consistent growth. And I think that's you know reflected in, in the conversations in the market. Um, automation is becoming much more commonplace. People recognise it has a, a clear role to play. Uh, and bridging all those gaps and all those points we talked about. Um, but we still saw that around only 42% were actually in fully integrated with the CRM. Mm. Um, so not, you know, uh, perhaps there is this situation still where it may be seen as a little bit of a silver bullet. So people get a great automation system in play, off they go, they set it up. Why isn't it miraculously delivering me fantastic leads? Um, whereas they maybe haven't completed the integration piece or they haven't run the sales and marketing alignment piece. Um, so I guess, you know, and it reminds me a little bit of the early days of social media where it was, you know, another sort of quick and easy magic bullet. Just, it's free, it's cheap, it's fantastic, it'll solve all your problems. Of course it doesn't, it needs just the same resources and rigor as everything else and has to, you know, be connected to the rest of your marketing objectives. Um, so I guess if you're one of those organisations who's maybe got their first system or is a little bit down that road but hasn't really doesn't feel they're getting the most out of it yet what advice do you guys have to the sort of next steps for them so I've worked in organizations where we have not had a marketing automation system to living through an implementation of a marketing <laughs> automation tool to joining a company where it's already been up and running and you know I do believe that marketing automation enables sales and marketing to become you know, more closely aligned, definitely in being able to deliver on that sort of seamless customer experience. Mm. Um, it does that because it empowers the marketer you know, to generate leads um, and to really demonstrate marketing accountability. But it takes effort mm. and it is a journey. Um, so I guess what I've learned um, are a few things is, you know, preparation is absolutely key. You know, when you're implementing um, a marketing automation strategy, you need to take the time out to think about the new processes that you might need to implement, mm. but also the outcomes that you're looking to generate from that kind of implementation. Um, so that's first and foremost. Um, I think it's also really key to get the relevant teams outside of marketing involved. I mean, I mentioned up front that, you know, marketing automation really brings alignment between sales and marketing. Well, get them involved from the process up front, you know, get the sales teams bought into um, this marketing automation um, initiative. They're already using a CRM system, so they may not actually understand the need or the benefits for implementing yet another tool. Um, and the other thing is they really understand the customer what works or what doesn't. Mm -hmm. So really make them part of that process. Um, I would also um, advise start small. I think mm. too often many organisations try to change everything at once. They can see that, to your point, it's the holy grail, so let's <laughs> make the entire transition at once. I would suggest very strongly starting small. Mm. Identify um, a part of your sales process or marketing process or where you're generating leads that isn't efficient um, and start small with identifying either one persona, one product where you can actually make a difference, whether mm. it be implementing a nurture journey or to understand where you have those gaps. Mm. That's great advice. It also then builds that sort of social proof within an organisation yeah, where you can get that get, get that buy-in from other stakeholders. Exactly. And then I think you always need to checkpoint. If you've got those joint metrics in mm. place up front and a cadence through which you're measuring your success, that in turn gives you an opportunity to talk about whether your marketing automation implementation has actually worked or not mm. or is working. Mm. Yeah. I mean, we had an interesting... We brought our CRM and marketing automation in at the same time and mm. they were sort of both being implemented at the same time with the intent that they would then be integrated. And they were, you know, monsters. So we implemented Salesforce and Marketo. And, uh, you know, normally an implementation of that scale would take, you know, a year in zero mm. land. We did it in three months. It was crazy. <laughs> but we learned a lot from that. And probably my biggest learning was staged, do it in a staged approach, cross-functional mm. sort of input. Uh, I also, someone, I had a bit of a moment with Marketo where I was like, this is not working. And someone described it as, you know, it's a big ugly tank, it's really powerful, but actually it's not beautiful, so don't expect it to be beautiful, just it's real, but you know, it's the power. So mm. get it moving, you know, get it steady, then add all the pretty bits. And that took us a good year of bedding it down, building operations teams, combining mm. our marketing and sales operations teams into one 
That was a mm. really important step for us. And then building it up to go. And now it's been two and a half years and it's really making traction. But that first year was mm -hmm. tricky. Rough going, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's, as you say, that's important to call out as well because I think it's quite easy to feel it's a big problem, it's overwhelming, yeah. that need to change everything all at once, that, yeah. that, that the pressure to transform is very uh, steep and so it's felt as this, yeah. you know, a wall of pressure um, and just acknowledging that it's going to be step by step, it's going to be a gradient, yeah. um, you're not in it alone or all organisations are going through this to some degree mm. or another, you may be quite a quite a ways ahead of many. Exactly and so yeah. just to be and just to be honest and transparent about and that or you'll you know you'll, the you'll trip you are, yourself the up. The more you know nimble agile you can be to do it, mm. um, it you know it will always take time though so yeah, don't expect miracles overnight because they won't happen. <laughs> and yeah. celebrate, celebrate the small wins yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But, you know, you have to automate to scale. Whether yeah. you want to go from one to 100 customers or 100 to a million customers, mm. automation is the key. I think uh, the needs, uh, organisations would do well to provide a vision within the organisation as to what marketing automation can achieve because it often sits within the marketing team. Mm -hmm. um, it's then seen as a marketing tool and yeah. often a kind of a deployment tool mm. um, and it's not understood particularly by sales as to the power behind marketing automation if you really get it right um, and, and it's really running well it can transform your business but it's not seen as that within organizations that's one the second is training um, so we we uh, have marketing automation um, and taking a team from a traditional approach to much more kind of customer journey led approach is very, very different. And there are so many things that go into that and training the team up both on the technology, which is not easy to use, mm -hmm and on um, all of the elements that go into a, an automated marketing campaign um, is really important because otherwise they're left with a tool that's great but they haven't got the skills to use it. Mm, yeah, and our course is actually on, we do marketing automation because they're always the ones that fall. And conferences as well. If you do a session on marketing automation, they're always the ones that are full yeah, because I think yeah. people realise there's potential there. Absolutely. A lot of people aren't doing it. But as you said, it's, it's so much about, I think, just that initial demystification as well. They kind of have a general sense of what it is and the power it can offer, but it's yep. largely in the abstract until they actually get their hands on the tool, yeah. have that clear vision, vision and strategy painted, as you say, yep. from, from leadership in the business to say, this is what we're aiming for, this is the transformation this can help catalyse. Yep. Um, and you all play a part in that, actually, in every single thing that you do. And I think you made that point originally that you know understanding what their you know their team their individual what how that piece how contributes they use that tool. Yeah. exactly and how that how they use that tool to reach not only their individual and team outcomes but you know contributing then to the whole of business as well 